Hello and welcome to this News and Rumours episode with me, Xenovids. In this one we're going to be looking at the various news and rumours that have been happening this week and mostly about all the kind of rules that have been leaking out about Games Workshop 7th edition and Orcs and Blood Angels. So let's start. Orcs and Blood Angels are rumoured to be the new box set coming out of Games Workshop. There's been a lot of things on the internet saying that there are various Orcs and Blood Angels boxes that are not being stocked anymore at Games Workshop or independent retailers and this is because there's going to be some new bits and bobs. So it looks like the rulebook will come out, Orcs will come out and the box set will come out around that period as well and then Blood Angels will be maybe August possibly which is kind of exciting. Um, they'll be the first Space Marine uh, chapter to have a 6th edition codex outside of the Space Marine Astartes Mir whatever it, the special word is for the Space Marines. It'll be the first one coming out so that's really exciting and new Orc model is always exciting for all you Xeno players out there. I'm definitely going to be buying the starter set and when I do I'll do a review on that and hopefully have some of the uh, new rule books. Speaking of rule books So, news has come out uh, all over the internet, it's just erupted basically, there's confirmation that there will be a free book set of the rule book, um, whether you have to buy them separately or whether it is in a set of free. I'm hoping you can buy them separately um, because I like to know the new rules. I've seen many pictures and catalogues uh, like the new White Dwarf issues a weekly basically a catalogue of all the models that are beautifully painted but I have always kind of seen that on the internet and there are websites out there like coolmini.com where you can just look at these amazing models and get some ideas there are tutorials on YouTube and in White Dwarf so there's, there's, there's some mixed minds out there about it but um, yeah let's talk about it Number one, Galaxy at War is the hobby guide, 144 pages of a guide to the hobby, understanding paints, glues, um, crafting, converting and stuff like that, all the hobby guide that you need for a new person. New people need to know how to do this. If you've got your, your child or if you are coming into the hobby from a friend's request you need to get an idea so this book is ideal for them not me but them maybe not you but them number two Dark Millennium is a background and artwork 128 pages of pictures and fluff is what I'm guessing again not for me Book 3 is the rule. Excellent. How to play the game. 208 pages of rules. Hopefully not a, everything is going to be redone because I don't want to remember, have to remember 208 pages of new rules. Um, obviously there are big ones coming up which we'll talk about in just a second. But this is the book. If I can buy it individually, this is the book that I will be purchasing because this is the one that I need for our battle leagues and everything like that. The artwork, maybe, maybe I'll get that. The hobby guide, I don't need it. I'm not a, a newbie to the to the to the hobby. I've been doing this for 15 years. There's there's not a lot new that they can really surprise me with. Um, except if they had guides on their say new paints range, the new technical paints range. Um, but I can always go into Games Workshop and talk to the staff there and again the internet is really helpful. Google knows everything. Pretty much. Okay, all you people that play Psychic Army. So if you've got Grey Knights, Eldar, Chaos and Demons, I guess, at some point. The most armies, except for Necrons and Tau. Any Necrons and Tau player out there, you can kind of go for a little walk. Go and make a cup of tea or something. This doesn't apply to you mostly, really. Okay, so... Rumours have been coming out about the psychic phase that is being introduced. Sixth edition introduced all these new psychic tables essentially, like uh, telepathy and pyromancy and biomancy, which 
is a great addition. It it, 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 it introduced something new and, and different, but not necessarily in a bad way. Um, and it introduced denying the witch, which is quite interesting. Roll a six, um, you deny the witch. If you're a psycho level, I think equal, you get a plus one, or if you're better, plus two, so you could deny the witch on a four up, which is really good. And it's kind of cool to use your psychers that way. What I didn't like is having to roll for these psychic powers. Um, but let's take a look at the psychic phase. Apparently, psychic phase is going to be between the movement and the shooting phase, right here, which is going to affect every single psychic power out there. I'm guessing we're going to have to forget everything, because um, there's, you've got maledictions, you've got blessings, and it says blessings at the moment are at the beginning of the turn. Malediction, I think might be at the beginning of the turn. The shooting psychic powers are done in the shooting phase. I guess that's all going to be merged into the um, the psychic phase unless the psychic phase is just there to be used as somewhere you can generate psychic powers because it seems to be a little bit confusing about that but there are going to be new psychic charts there's going to be a there's going to be seven in total and uh, one's going to be santic and malefic uh, but apparently it's uh, it's going to be a lot easier to die, your psychic, your psychers, they're, they're going to die a lot apparently. Um, if you think to fantasy, how it's extremely random with the magic, and you can peril, well, I don't know what the perils is in fantasy, but they can go like that. Apparently, that is going to happen. But I guess from that. That's the downside of psychic powers, if they're going to make that um, more of a detriment. Taking psychers, you're going to die. Then you lose the model. That's a lot of points you lose. So I am guessing and interpreting from that, psychic powers are going to get a huge buff and there's going to be a lot more psychers out there on the table, which... Um, will be great for those psychic armies again. But let's take a look at some of the rumours that uh, talk about how you generate these psychic things. Okay, so, psychic phase. D6 plus mastery level of all of your psychers equals your warp pool. So if I have a two level one psychers and I roll a three, I have five things in the warp pool. And you draw the dice from this warp pool to cast. Um, and once used, you can't use those dice again in the turn, which kind of makes sense. Powers are cast on the amount of successes, so warp charge two would require two successes. Warp charge four requires four successes, and success is a d6 roll of a four up. So, if I'm guessing from that, if the psychic power is, um, is a warp charge of two, and I have a pool of dice of five, I would take uh, two or three dice out of there, roll the dice, and I get, say, three four ups. Yay, done! One four up, it failed, um, and I've used three of the five dice I've got here, so now I'm left with two. Um, so that's interesting, kind of makes sense, and uh, there'll be a limit of how many dice you can throw at a spell. Um, so your mastery level plus one dice, it looks like. It's all right, it makes sense. It, just means you, you, it stops those players that are gonna be like, I have a psychic power that can destroy your entire army in one turn. I'm gonna roll all these dice because you can't deny the witch. It prevents that, which is kind of good, which, again, Necron and Tau players. If you can hear me in the back, Necron and Tau players, it's good for you. There's some restrictions on how we do things. I think they heard. Um, double sixes and double ones is still at Perils. Um, and apparently Perils got a lot worse. Worse. But if you think about it, you're doing all these psychic powers. You can take more 
and more dice out of the pool, more and more chances of periling. Um, if you're like me, watch all of my battle reports, you will see the amount of ones I roll for them, but not when I do leadership tests. So if I can trick my dice, thinking they're leadership tests, um, they'll not do double ones or double sixes, and hopefully they'll get four ups. So, um, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting for the psychic powers. Okay, another thing come out on the internet is some of the new things, the new missions that have been happening. There apparently is the standardized six missions that we're all used to, and then there'll be six more. And um, what I'll do for this section is I'll uh, like all the things I've talked about today, include it in the link description below. But it looks a little bit like this. Like there's no, there's new missions, which is brilliant. New missions are brilliant. We need more missions. It's great. Um, but there's tactical objectives and little things which are interesting. And actually, we've been playing that for a while, me and my buddies, uh, in our Christmas Cup tournament, which is we go to Warhammer World the weekend before Christmas every year. We get a hotel and we take uh, one or two armies of 2,000 points. Uh, generally it's kill points, but there are secret objectives. Now normally it's um, you roll, just you've deployed and you've sorted out how many objectives there are and you kind of roll the points value of these objectives or we decide the rule if you have an objective you get a point at the end of that turn. Well similar things look like are coming into the Games Workshop 7th edition. Um, in which you can either roll or draw a card and it says oh this objective if you hold it at, whoever holds it at the end of the turn they get a, a point to add it to the victory points so it means uh, it forces you to be more aggressive or be uber defensive and kind of change how you think rather than if you have two gunline armies I guess um, each of them has an objective um, each of them gets the points, and the points, and the points, and it's kind of being a stalemate. They have to go for them. Um, it is more important now to go for those objectives. So it adds another twist and flavour to it, which I like the sound of personally. So I, 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 I like that. But again, for more details, check out the link in the description below. Okay, and of last thing to talk about now is the vehicle chart. Apparently the vehicle chart is going to be changed so that um, vehicles are maybe not, they're less likely to, to die because I think whole points are staying, but um, the damage done to them uh, may not be as bad before. So it looks like they're trying to may try to buff up the vehicles because we found, especially in America, Especially, I've seen a lot of people like Fritz and Jowables who are on YouTube, brilliant channels by the way, go check them out, that um, saying that 6th edition came along and then no one took vehicles except for flyers. So it was mass infantry and flyers, which I think was the business plan for Games Workshop. If you just look at Chaos, Cultists, Tyranids, Gaunts, um, etc, etc. Um, but vehicles kind of took a hit because it's easier to glance a, something to death whereas before in 5th edition it wasn't so now I think they're going to give vehicles a little bit more survivability so more vehicles going to be on the table um, so I'm hoping maybe psychic powers can affect vehicles and disrupt them a little bit uh, just to kind of prevent that because I'm uh, I fed up as a 
as a, something like a Tyranid player, um, or maybe an Orc player, who have low strength weapons that have to get into close combat to actually do anything to these vehicles, having to move up the field, and sometimes very slowly, only six inches and then hopefully running, to come against these vehicles and being able to punch them feels great if they're slightly more survivable and you've got a massive line of tanks looking at you and they're just shooting you to smithereens not as fun so i'm hoping maybe some kind of psychic stuff can disrupt them or additional rules help that again bound and unbound armies maybe you get something that helps you out there have seen i'll include it in this section that uh Bound armies, one of the things is you get to re-roll your Warlord trait. As a Tyranid player, brilliant. They need that. 100% need it. If you roll a 1, you may as well not, not bother with anything. If you roll a 6, you feel no pain. I think, off the top of my head. Yeah, I think it is. So, re-rolling your Warlord traits is not bad. Um, but I'm hoping for better stuff because what's to stop me from taking like 10 riptides in a 2000 point list nothing really other than money and that's just horrible um unless you say look i want to uh i want to try this out and you and your buddies can do that because games workshop uh like mini war gaming matt says on his channel it's not competitive. It's a hobby, and they have some rules. Generally, the newest armies are going to be stronger, and then as time goes on, they become weaker. There are armies like Space Marines and stuff that are going to be in the middle because they've got great stats and great weapons and stuff. But, um, yeah, you, you just not competitive, really. Um, <laughs> And people are going to take cheese lists all the time, all the time. And having this allows them to be uber cheesy. But I guess now no one has restrictions, so anyone and everyone can do the most cheesy list they want to. Um, and in a friendly environment, I think that's fine. Um, and you say, look, you get the cheesiest list you can get. I get the cheesiest list I can get. Try and take down my squad of like 12 Carnifexes and two wing type tyrants give it a go see what you can do or my squadron of like eight wing type tyrants what are you going to do about that nothing really try it um it'd be interesting so i think seventh edition coming along the more i talk about it i said before um there's going to be a lot of money going into games workshop and that's what they need. Their money has gone right down. They're not making as much money as they have done in the past. And I think it's because they've been just ignoring who their customers are. They've been ignoring the independent retailers and it's starting to show. They've had so many releases, partly because of legal reasons, so that they can copyright every model and all of their brand. And so many releases, but their profits haven't gone up. And if they have, it's a small amount. And sales haven't gone up hugely. So they need something. 7th edition comes along, it's going to be like people will see it and they'll say, right, vehicles are brilliant. I can take any list I want so I can get the models I've wanted to take and not been able to. Or use the models that have been on the shelf for ages. Or people are going to go, great, so now I have to buy £400 worth of stuff. I didn't take Psychos, Psychos are now brilliant. Or I didn't have vehicles, now I have to have all these vehicles. Great. I'm going to go and play War Machine or Infinity. And that's how it's going to be. Uh, I think mostly it's going to be good news. Some people aren't going to like it. Some people don't ever like the changes. Um, but that's the nature of Games Workshop. I am annoyed, however, it's within two years. Less than two years ago was when Sixth Edition came out. But if they are releasing so many new things, they are going to need an update. And their FAQs are appalling. Appalling. So I'm hoping 7th edition is going to be great. 
Okay everyone, thank you for watching this, uh, this new kind of layout for my news and rumours. Let me know how it is, the layout, and how informative it is. Again, links in the description below about everything I've talked about. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got this far, I salute you. Please comment, share, like, and subscribe, and I will see you on my next video.